guys, today I'm going to be doing a quick first impressions testing video of the FM Blur Effect Lifting Foundation. Now about this foundation, a 30ml bottle retails for £16.50, which is pretty good, it's cheaper than the really high end, uh, and we're going to see if it's worth it. Uh, it comes in three different shades, it comes in classic beige, light nude and satin sand. I have the shade classic beige, which is the middle shade, so I might have to mix it with a little bit of lightning drops. It claims to prevent shiny looking skin, uh, give a soft focus effect and a visual lifting effect. So let's go ahead and see what it's all about. So as always with first impressions, I'm going to prime one side of my face and leave the other side just to see how the foundation performs on different bases. I'm going to use the Honey Dew Me Up Primer from NYX, which is one of my favourite primers. So I'm just going to pop a few blobs just on the side of my face that is unprimed and blend that in with beauty sponge. So I would say it is a really light coverage foundation, but uh, as you can see, it is already starting to provide some coverage on this side of the face. Seems to be sitting really nicely over my pores, not sinking in, not clogging up, and that's on the unprimed side. So I'm just gonna put some on the side with the primer and see how that performs. And blend that in. So on the prime side, I would say it is looking a bit more dewy, a bit more glowy, but that probably is that primer underneath. Um, so far, I would say it's not a matte finish, so it's not really drying if you have dry skin, but it's not leaving like a oily, greasy sheen. So I'd say it's more like a satin effect and it would suit uh, most skin types really, whether you're really dry or really oily. I'm just gonna go in with a couple more dots around the face just to add a little bit more coverage. It does seem to be blending in really nice. Uh, it's really, really thin formula, which is good if you don't like it feeling cakey and greasy and building up on your skin. Obviously, it's gonna feel different depending on which primer you use, whether you use a silicone based primer which is meant to fill your pores and create a smooth base that's more for oily skin or whether you use a moisturizing primer such as the one I use for dry skin which will plump up your skin and make any product on top of it just a little bit more glowy okay so that's the second layer on I would definitely say it's buildable um, I don't know if you put even more on whether you could build it to a complete full coverage but I'd say at the moment it's light to medium coverage which is fine for me I would say that on the primed side it does uh, cling a little bit better to the skin but obviously that is the point in primers but on the unprimed side it still looks really nice Overall, I'm quite pleased with it. Also, the shade is quite a good match. I only had to add just a couple of lightning drops, which don't change the formula of a foundation. They just slightly alter the shade of it. Right, I'm just gonna go add concealer, powder, everything else, do the rest of my makeup, my eyes, and then I'll come back and show you my final thoughts. So, I've just finished the rest of my makeup. I used the Be Perfect Stacey Marie Carnival palette for my eyes. Uh, I mainly focused on these pink shades here, which are super pigmented, so I love that. And I also used the Revolution Eye Glisten uh, Cream Eyeshadow Things, either end, just to add a little bit of sparkle on the eyes, along with Revolution Diamond Luster Lipstick in the shade Corset which is this sort of glittery pink. So, all in all, on top of that foundation, I found that my concealer and my powder sat really well. I didn't use a coloured powder because I didn't want to add any additional coverage. I wanted to focus just on the foundation. So I just used the RCMA No Colour Powder, which is basically just a talcum powder to set your face. You wouldn't have to set your face if you didn't want to with this foundation because it does dry down and won't be slippery 
everything all over the place but it is quite hot today and I know what my face is like so I did just set it all in place anyway. So I'm just going to take you to some different lighting to show you how the foundation looks in different natural lighting. So you can see here the lighting is slightly darker, um, the coverage is really good I would say. If you like a really really full coverage you could probably build it to that but I would say it's definitely light to medium coverage. Um, it's covered up any uh, imperfections and little scars and things but you can still see my freckles through it so it definitely looks like skin it doesn't look cakey. If I come into slightly different lighting here you can see it from a different angle what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back in a few hours. It's now currently 11.54. I'll pop back in a few hours and show you how it's wearing then. Okay, so it is now 5.46. So the foundation has been on nearly six hours. And I have to say, I am pretty impressed. Just having a look at it a bit closer up in more detail. Um, everything has lasted really well actually. It's definitely got that natural finish. It hasn't gone cakey. I find with a lot of full coverage foundations they tend to settle into my smile lines and under my eyes. But this one actually hasn't done that. Yeah, so all in all, I would definitely recommend this foundation. It works for me, so maybe it'll work for you. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.